So my granddad recently gave me his OM-1 Olympus film camera. The OM-1 is a fully manual camera. You can get a battery for the built-in light meter, but you don't have to use it. You, um, you don't have to use it with batteries. You don't have to use it with the built-in light meter, which is great because, you know, I'm used to shooting with cameras without a light meter, like my Mimir RZ67, my Mimir RB67. Those cameras don't have built-in light meters. So previously what I've done is either metered with my digital camera or I've metered with my iPhone, for example, and various different apps. But sometimes having, you know, that extra camera, the phone or the DSLR is kind of counterintuitive, you know, it's one extra step you don't always have want to have to do. You don't always want to have to have your DSLR with you. You don't always want to have to take out another camera to meet a scene. And that's where light meters come into play. I wanted to test the OM-1 without having to get batteries for it because this camera in particular can be really difficult to get the right kind of batteries for it because I think they discontinued it. But it coincided really nicely with this company Astrahore, I, I believe that's how you pronounce it, but I may be butchering that pronunciation, sending me their little light meter. And when I say little, I mean really little. And that is one of the reasons that I love it. So this is the light meter. And as you can see, it is really tiny. And what it does is it just fits onto the cold shoe of your camera. So for example, I can just slip this on to the cold shoe of the OM-1 like that. And it meters the light through a sensor here. So far, I found it a lot more intuitive than using an external light meter that you would normally have, um, something like a Sekonic or something like a DSLR or iPhone, because it becomes a part of the camera, just as you can see here. It just is as though you're metering the camera from the top of the camera, rather than maybe a screen inside the camera or a histogram inside the camera. The other great thing about this light meter is that it has USB-C charging. So that's great for, you know, you guys who have got the newest iPhone or, you know, all of these kind of tools that now use USB-C charging. So the great thing about using a light meter like this is that it can obviously not only save your photography from kind of metering from eye and maybe getting that wrong, especially in changing light conditions, but it also means that you can save money on buying cameras that maybe don't have light meters or don't have working light meters. I've also found, you know, with portrait shoots when I'm using my Mamiya, I then don't have to kind of switch awkwardly between camera and camera, like the two different cameras to get a reading. I just have to clip this on and I can just quickly press the button and, and get a reading there and then even when the lighting is changing. One thing I'm not 100% sure on though is whether or not you would be able to meter something like uh, flash photography. I'm not sure how you'd go about that with this particular light meter. So in that case, you know, something like using your DSLR is probably most useful in like a studio setting. But for outdoor photography, street photography, portraits that are outdoors, this little device that literally, I just throw it into my bag, like into one of the pockets. It sits with like all my SD cards and my batteries, it's tiny. And um, it's a great little find. I'm gonna go through like some of the functions now and show you how you use this light meter. Okay, so once you have your light meter slipped onto the hot shoe like this, you have one button there that controls basically everything alongside this dial. So if you press it once, you'll see that it comes on and we have a reading of one over 1.6. So that is based on an ISO of 400, as you can read there. If you double click this button and then press it down for half a second on the second time, it will allow you to change the ISO. So I can change it using this dial all the way between five and 6,400. So for the purpose of this, we'll just put it at 400, quite a standard ISO. Click the button again to get yourself back to the main shooting mode, which goes between aperture priority and shutter priority. So to switch between aperture and shutter priority, you double click the button. So now it's in shutter priority and I can change the shutter using this dial. And then all that will be adjusted will be the aperture. Or if I want to change it to aperture priority, double click it again and switch the aperture around. So put that at 1.8, for example, would then change the 
shutter speed to 1 over 30. There is also exposure compensation. So if you were to double click this button again, on the second press, you press it for three and a half seconds. So like this. It will then switch to exposure compensation and then you can use this dial to change it, you know, plus one stop, minus one stop, etc. So I'm just going to set it to normal and then press again to return back to shutter priority. This little button here, which is like a return key, that means that the light meter is taking kind of constant readings. But it really is that simple. It's just this one button here and this dial to control everything. If there is a T, it means shutter priority and you also have this little triangle on the shutter to show you exactly what that means. And then again, if I was to double click it, it would go to A and show the arrow next to the aperture. If I wanted to lock in this reading, I'd just do a single press of the button and that will lock in the reading that I've got. If I was to press and hold the button, it will turn off the real time readings. So to make it do it again, to like start it up again, you'd need to press and hold to get those readings. But it's a really simple little tool and one that I would definitely recommend trying out. But thank you to Astri Hori, if that's how you pronounce your company name, and um, for sending me through this little device. It really is it's very useful for me and the type of photography that I do. If you guys are interested, of course, I'll link it in the description. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.